Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to do a playthrough of Aventuria, the adventure card game. Now many of you might know I loved Warhammer, the adventure card game, and since that's dead, I found this Aventuria and I picked it up. I have all of the expansions. I actually did do the, uh, the Kickstarter version, so I have all the Kickstarter stuff. I hope you guys are excited. I can't tell you if this is just as good as Warhammer or not. I will tell you that it's not Fantasy Flight, so <laughs> the component quality is definitely not as good, but that's because, you know, it's Fantasy Flight. Come on, it's hard, hard to beat them. But the gameplay is a lot of fun, and I hope you guys enjoy the playthrough. So in this video, we'll just do quick setup, and I might actually jump into a little bit of the gameplay because setup is so quick, and then we'll get into the full playthrough next video. First thing you want to do is determine how you want to play the game. Are you playing it as a duel or are you playing the adventure mode? Well, I'm playing this solo, definitely the adventure mode. So this is co-op. We're all going to work together to try and get through an adventure. I'm going to play with three heroes. I decided to do an all-female cast because I really like all of these heroes and they all play it very differently. They all have different strengths and I think it'll be fun. So we've got Lariel as our archer. We have Mithreban as our sorceress and we have Tajavla, Tajalva? <laughs> you guys tell me how to actually say these names and I'll say it right in the next videos. That Tajalva are warrior. Each hero will have a character sheet which will denote their stats as well as their one time special ability and some sort of uh, uh, weapon that they start with, as well as a card that shows their stats on these different uh, tests that you might have to, to do. So I might have to do a body control test. And mine is a 10. So I roll a d20 and I have to get a 10 or less. So this game you're actually trying to roll less instead of more for successes. Yeah, that might be hard for me. I always seem to roll high. <laughs> so we'll see how that, how that works. Also, when you start doing an adventure and you gain rewards, you can only put certain cards into your deck. And this shows you the type of cards you can put into your deck. Each hero will have a 30 card preset deck, but there is a possibility to be able to create your own deck and they provide you with instructions on how to do that in the rule book. I'm using the generic decks, but you can do some deck building if you want. Each hero will also have a life track counter. You all will start at 40 health and if you go down to zero, bad things happen. <laughs> You'll also wanna grab fate point tokens equal to the amount of players times two. So I'm playing with three players, so I have six fate point tokens. These can be used to re-roll dice. And technically in the rules it says you can only use it to re-roll other players' dice. But on BGG, I think that was a mistake. And it meant to be you can re-roll your own or you can use your fate uh, chip to allow someone else to re-roll theirs. That's how I'm going to play. If that's wrong, let me know. You'll also have your character chips here. And these will be used to determine randomness. So if something's going to happen to one random player, I'll just flip these over, shuffle them up, and we'll pick one of the random players that the effect happens to. You'll also want to grab your rewards deck. During the adventure, we can gain rewards, and these can go into our deck, and we can use them. Lastly, you want to pick out the adventure you're going to go on. I'm going to do the Ship of Lost Souls. This is a three-act adventure. It comes from one of the expansions, and I will say it might be a tiny bit spoilery, so if you don't want any spoilers, you're not going to be able to watch this. I'm sorry, but I really want to do a fun adventure. I haven't even tried this one, and I think it's really fun to see what this game can be. And so that's why I decided to pick an expansion one. Um, so if you only have the base game, you can certainly watch this. It's going to have no bearing on any of the base game scenarios. But, you know, just know that this might spoil a little bit of the story for you. Without further ado, I think we're going to jump right into this adventure. Like I said, if you don't want spoilers, stop here. Otherwise, hang out with me and let's start the Ship of Lost Souls. Act 1, Boarding Crew. Pearly Sea, southeast of Marsaken in the year 994 BF. You are aboard the mighty ship, Queen of Festum, taking part in a southbound expedition by the merchant house of Stormbrandt, when one morning the lookout reports the sighting of a demon's arc black's sail on the horizon. These ships are sent by the Witch King Morda in regular intervals. Their order is to bring a dark diamond to Aventuria. It binds the souls of the damned who devoted themselves to serve Morda, and when a dark diamond reaches Aventuria, it becomes a terrible breeding ground for demons. You cannot allow this to happen, so you volunteer to row over to an unholy ship to find and destroy the dark diamond. Now, however, as you are mooring your small rowboat at the side of a gargantuan demon arc, swaying back and forth in the heavy wind. You don't feel so brave anymore. 
We begin now by assembling all Ship of Lost Soul 1 cards and separate the seasick cards. Each player makes a body control roll. Here we have our stack cards. Now we're looking here at body control. So body control for Lariel here is 10. What we have to do is on this die, roll a 10 or less to succeed. Now if we roll a 1, a 1 looks like this really cool uh, bow and arrow, we get a critical success. If we roll a 20, it's a critical failure. Mirahiban over here, she has body control only of 8, so it's going to be even harder. But Talva over here has 14, so it's like more likely that she's going to succeed. So I get to roll all three of these dice. I'll roll them together since they're color specific, and we'll see who succeeds and who fails. Remember, we're looking for low numbers here. Low, low, low. And I did not get low. <laughs> hey, I did for one. So this is a critical success, but we have an 18 and a 14. Like I told you, I'm really good at rolling high. Both of those are fails, but for um, Tajla, that is a success. Our two failures for Lariel and Mahiriban were only f regular failures, not critical failures. But we did have a critical success. So let's read that one first. You plant your sea legs on the deck of the Ark, ready to fend off any foul creatures that might come your way. We get to take one fate point. So we get one fate point right away for Talva. However, for both Mahiriban and Lariel, in your seasickness, you stumble over the seaweed-covered deck and bash your knee. Ow! It's downhill from here, no doubt about it. You lose one health and receive a seasick card. Our seasick cards say, The rocking back and forth on this ship makes you nauseous. You are a little green around the gills, feel dizzy and wobbly on your legs. If you could, you would turn your stomach inside out and keep it that way until all of this was over. The effect is, as long as this card remains in play, all your skill rolls suffer a minus two modifier. Oh. Place three tokens on this card. Every time you succeed at a skill roll, remove one. When all of the skill tokens are removed, discard this card. Well, if you think about it, this makes a lot of sense because Tavla is part of this expansion. She was the uh, hero that came with it, so of course she's ready for the sea. But Lariel and Mahiridon, not ready for the sea. <laughs> They're used to being on firm ground, and all of a sudden, whoa, the boat's moving. <laughs> so that's just going to make it a little harder for them. We also can't forget, each one of them takes one point of damage. So they're both at 39. You are greeted by an eerie scene. The ship's figurehead depicts a disgusting creature, a hybrid between a human and a lizard with bared teeth. And under the seaweed that covers the rest of the ship, you make out grotesque carvings of a similar ilk. Another thing that catches your eye is the pirate who is spiked to the main mast with a huge nail through his forehead. Ugh. While you're looking at it, the dead sailor opens his eyes and utters a hollow screech, which is answered by a cry of beastly voices from down below. Undead! In a gesture of belated satisfaction, you chop his head off his chest. Your next enemies won't go down this easy, and that's for sure. Through an opening in the quarter deck, you climb down into the belly of the ship. The corridors and chambers are narrow and musty, and in the light of your oil lamps, you notice that the air is filled with the tiny particles of dust and algae that enters your lungs with every single breath. You are well advised to make your stay on board this demonic ship as short as possible. Unexpectedly, you find yourselves in front of the ship's armory, a large room filled with a vast number of Cochraneans, Zilts, and undead pirates. One of the Cochraneas, who is greasing his weapon, looks up and right through you. You should be clearly visible to him, and yet he doesn't seem to notice you. Psst! Over here. You hear a whisper from behind. You cautiously follow the invitation into the ship's sail room. Here you see a small shriveled figure in oil cloth with a bicorn on its head, scribbling in a big old book with a quill while smoking a pipe. You have found the ship's kobold, and judging by the shrewd and amused look on his face, he doesn't seem eager to cause you any harm, at least for the time being. Now we need to assemble all Ship of Lost Souls 1 cards and separate the group card good advice. Each player makes a persuasion roll. Now Talva, she has a fate point. She can use that to re-roll for skill checks. But everyone else, they just gotta take what they roll. Let's see if our crew is really persuasive. Uh, we've got a 10, a 12, and an eight. Okay, not terrible, could be worse. Three ones would be great. And we've got a 19, a 19, and a 15. What did I tell you guys? I roll high, this is terrible. That's all fails. At least none of them were critical failures. The cobalt frowns when he sees your face. You feel a little sting in your heart. Discard one fate point for each person. If you don't have any, then instead pick one from the middle and remove it from the game. 
So this is why I didn't do the reroll for Talva, because Talva wasn't great at persuasion. So she'll just put hers back into the center of the table, but then we're going to lose two forever. So these two for the rest of the game we can't get. So the most that we can get now is four. Ugh. We also grabbed the group card Good Advice. After a failed knowledge roll, if the die shows an even result, remove one token from this card to reroll the roll. So I'm, I'm assuming we'll know more about that card, but I'm assuming that's going to be something that we can use when we're doing our encounter. The ship's kobold looks at you with mockery in his eyes. I've hidden you from the eyes of these brutes so we can play a funny game. I'll ask a riddle of each of you, and whoever answers correctly will be told the location of one of my many secret pirate stashes on board of the ship. Let's begin. Oh man, I'm terrible at riddles. <laughs> We now need to assemble all Ship of Lost Soul 1 cards and separate the cards Water to Ice Potion and pick all Pirate Treasure Special cards and shuffle them into a draw pile. Each player makes a Knowledge roll. Lirial has 8 as Knowledge, Mahabin has 14 as Knowledge, yeah she's really knowledgeable, and Talva has 10. Let's see what we get. Well it looks like Lirial is the only one that succeeded, the other two failed. <laughs> Darn it. It looks like Lyriel is the only one that gets to obtain a pirate treasure. The other two just essentially fail at answering the riddle, and the kobold laughs at you. <laughs> Before we gain that pirate treasure, it says here, every player who rolled successfully is allowed to continue the game of riddles by making a second knowledge roll. After that, though, it's done. So we might as well have Lyriel do it. I mean, as long as she doesn't critical fail, she should be okay. We're looking for an eight or under. That's a four. Wow, that is two successes for Lyriel. Wow, I think Lyriel is more perceptive than I think we realize. <laughs> we'll flip over the first one, and we have Curative Elixir. Cool. And then we have our second one, and we have the Sapphire. Now, Pirate Treasure is kind of cool. I love this. So when you gain it, unfortunately, it all comes with a pirate curse that needs to be broken. So every time you attain it, you got to flip it upside down. They're usually negative game effects that remain in effect until you can break the curse. So although Lyriel got two of these, it's also kind of hurting her right now. So first, in your any of type of attacks here, just not magic, you must use the lower of both values. Whoa! And to break it at the start of a combat, put all your action cards that provide you with attack in the discard pile. Save for two of each of those cards. Afterwards, reshuffle your draw pile. Okay, that's not terrible. And this one, lucky you, the quarter is not cursed. Flip this card. <laughs> That's so cool. So this one we, we get right, right away. And this now will give us place one token on this card. When your health sinks to zero during this adventure, remove one and immediately heal yourself by one. I mean, not great, but hey, it's, it's a last minute save. I like it. And we'll put that on there. All right, that's enough playing around, the ship's cobalt says out of the blue. It's time to return the hardships of life. The only way to get deeper into the ship is a ladder in the armory. You know what that means. He flicks a finger and vanishes into thin air. Behind your backs, you hear a surprise grunt. Turning around, you see a group of sailors looking at you in surprise. Before you have time to react, they sound the alarm, and a frantic battle erupts. <laughs> okay. With that, I think I'm going to stop this video. We'll do the encounter in the next one. Hope you guys are enjoying it, and we'll see you at the next stop.